Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Katherine King. I'm the Education Abroad Advisor here at Berea. And the goal of this video is to give you an overview of really the logistics of what needs to happen if you were applying to study abroad. So keep in mind that you apply to Berea, basically to our office, to me, to verify that you're eligible. And you also need to apply to the program that you found. So maybe it's a CIEE program or an API program or a CI, um, sorry, excuse me, USAC program. Maybe you're going through KEYS. Many of our students study abroad with KEYS. Um, they're gonna have their own deadlines and processes, but you also have to apply to Berea. And that's because we're making sure you're eligible to um, study abroad based on Berea's policies um, and that you are going to be a part of our sort of cohort of folks who get information about how to transfer your credit back, how to make sure you're getting funding, um, and all of those sorts of things. So there are usually two applications. Let me go ahead and share my screen with you. And ignore that. And the page that I'm gonna be referring to in this short video is this page, the steps to studying abroad. So this is a good place to go. Um, and I'm not gonna click on each and every step because that would be a really long video. Um, but of course, you want to make sure that you're eligible, that you have the GPA, that you're not graduating the semester that you're hoping to go abroad. Um, read through that page, you know, make sure that you're eligible. Come see us if you have questions. We are having students still experience delays getting passports here post-COVID or continuing COVID. Um, so please, 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 if you don't have a passport or your passport is expired, go ahead and apply as soon as you can. Um, we can walk you through the steps. Our website guide is updated. Um, you don't apply to us, right? You apply usually at a post office. You submit your application, sometimes at a library. Um, here in Berea, it's the Berea post office, not the campus post office that you need to go to um, to apply. Peer advising is a good first step. I often have students want to talk with me, and that's great. I wish I could talk with everyone all the time. Unfortunately, the semesters get really crazy for me, and I'm just one person supporting all Berea students. Um, so please visit peer advising first, um, unless it's a downtime like winter and summer. I have more times, winter break, I mean, to meet with students. Um, we're just now finalizing our hours for this spring 2023 semester. Those will be posted on our doors here in Woods Pen, as well as in our email signatures as soon as they're finalized. The goal is to have advising Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday evenings. Talk with your advisor, too, about, especially if you're planning on a semester or hoping to do a semester, you know, which semester might be best? When do you have the most flexibility? What sorts of courses do you need? Do you need perspectives? Do you need just electives? Are you looking for major courses? That's all going to impact you. Um, we have a lot of options. It's sort of an overwhelming amount of options, and we'll have a separate video about your options. Um, what I really, and we can do a separate video too about funding. What I want to show you today, though, is actually the logistics in a broad office of how you apply. So after February 15th, this next deadline, a broad office is where I go to look at who has completed an application, and then I use that information to go and verify that everyone's eligible. So you are going to visit a broad office if you have not visited it before. Um, we are trying to upgrade our program of choice because you will notice that this is quite a clunky program. Um, regardless, um, we do need students to use it so that we can um, verify your eligibility. So you're going to create a profile if you haven't already. Um, it's free. And once you create a profile, you'll be able to add an application. So this is going to look slightly different just because I am in an administrator account, um, but still pretty similar. And I'm going to use one of our labor students as an example. Um, so let's do Malena. So once you create an account, you would go to the page where it says applications and it would be blank, right? Because you haven't applied to anything uh, unless you've applied to something before. So we will go in here for Malena. She has a lot of applications. One, because she's considered various things. Uh, she's actually done a study abroad program in the summer. She went to Barcelona last summer. Um, and also because we do the same thing I'm doing right now. We use her as an example for folks. 
So let's imagine that Milena has chosen or has is hoping to go abroad this coming fall um, and she knows where she wants to go. You're going to go in here. Uh, well, she wants to do another ISA program because she thought her first ISA program was so excellent and she is going to choose external because it's not a Berea run program. She is going to select ISA. Now I'll pause here for one second. If your program provider does not show up here, contact us because I can create the program for you. We're having trouble with this program, not loading um, external providers programs properly. So if you have any trouble with the logistics of adding an application, please email me or come and see me. It's something that I can fix in a matter of minutes once I know about it. Um, you select the term. So she's looking at, in our example, fall 23 and then the program name. If you do not see the exact program that you're looking for, please choose the closest one and or email me. So let's say she went to Barcelona. She wants to go back to Barcelona. She wants to do uh, this university. They have obviously several different options in Barcelona and she is applying. Again, this looks slightly different for me because I'm in as an administrator, but here now we see Barcelona for a semester, there are seven forms that students have to complete. So this is showing correctly. Um, as a student you, applying, you won't see these other forms at this time. You will just see the application forms. These are the seven things that you need to complete. Uh, I'm gonna talk briefly about each one of them and then end this video because I'm trying to keep it short. This is what needs to be done by February 15th or whatever deadline, you know, if, we're, if you're watching this at a later time um, and there's a different deadline, this is what needs to be finished. So let's start with the, the sort of most basic form. It's the permission to study abroad. Um, this is a lot of information that I'm sure you've typed a million times about yourself, about your study plan, um, about whether or not you have a passport. Um, this, I encourage you to keep these short. There are two short answer questions, max 300 words, just a few sentences is fine here. Uh, and then you're agreeing to terms. So this form should only take you, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes with the short answer and you'll be done. Um, the recommendations are also easy for you. You're just going to put in your advisor's information and it's going to send them a form. So I encourage you before you fill it out, because then it, it sends it to the advisor immediately, go and speak with your advisor or at least email them, um, let them know what you're thinking so they're not surprised when this form comes to them. You will also choose one faculty member, um, same thing, you put in their, their contact information and it's gonna go to them. So please speak with them ahead of time. Your transcript can be unofficial. Um, this pop-up is not going to show up for you. It will just come directly to this page where you will upload a transcript. Um, unofficial is fine. Curriculum plan is a simple one here. You're just checking a box that you've done it, but this is basically the, it's, this is a form that only shows up for semester long programs. And it means that you've talked with your advisor through what you're looking at and it, that your plan to study abroad for a semester is not delaying your graduation. The ones that take a little bit longer for students are the budget and the scholarship application. The scholarship application is 10 short answer questions for students, um, and this is so that you can access our grant. So the Center for International Education gives a grant. Um, for a semester, it's up to 75% of the cost of a program, but that's capped at $8,000. So if your program costs $20,000, you know, you're not getting 75% of that from the CIE, it would be max of 8,000. Um, and this is, it's important to note that you can't be over awarded. So if you end up receiving other scholarships and you don't need our money to meet your budget, um, you won't be awarded any or perhaps all of it, right? You might only need 2,000, 4,000. It's sort of a stop gap in your budget. Um, you will have longer conversations with me and with financial aid about this. Um, but know that first, typically students use Pell funding. Um, if you went to high school in Kentucky, you might have money from, from KES. 
You might have other external scholarships earmarked for study abroad. You might win a Gilman. Um, you might have a really low cost program. So you may not need the full 75% or 8,000 from the CIE, but if you do need funds, um, that's that's how that grant works. I feel like I didn't explain that well because I'm trying to be succinct here, um, but know that this, this area is 10 short answer questions. Um, and luckily since COVID, one upside is that we have had enough funds for all students who are interested and eligible to go abroad. Pre-COVID, these questions would be put to our committee and it includes faculty um, because we just we didn't have enough funds for the demand. Um, since I've worked here since November 2021, we haven't had to um, deny students. But just so you know, these questions would come into play if we got into a situation where we have so many students applying and we don't have enough funds. So keep in mind that your answers might be read by a committee that includes staff and faculty. Finally, the budget. I get a lot of questions about the budget. Um, this pop-up won't show up for you. You will be brought directly to this page. Um, you download this form. People have had trouble downloading it. So here's a trick, save as, whatever you wish to call it, wherever you wanna save it. Um, it's going to pop up an error message and you can click this arrow and say keep. So I apologize for the sort of complicated nature of downloading this form. Um, this is a budget form that's interactive. It's going to tally things up for you. Do your best. We will be going over this together. I'll be looking at it with you. Um, financial aid will be looking at it with you. So don't think that whatever you put here is set in stone and or guaranteed. No, this is your best accounting of how much your program would cost. Um, so you're going to put in the fee. And also very important to use this column, please put links in because we're gonna go back to these links as we work on the budget to look at what's posted online, um, whether or not it includes housing or that's a separate fee, um, what the estimate or the cost for meals is, um, all of these things should be found on the program's website. And then you're gonna leave this part alone. This is the Berea College fees. We don't know fall fees yet. We won't know them until July or August, um, but this is the best estimate we have at this time because these are the current spring fees. Um, and then you're gonna have some more um, places to plug things in. So do your best with this form um, and we will be looking at it together. You're going to save, you also at the bottom put in resources. So you can put in here, you know, about the CIE grant um, that you're applying for. You can put notes on what scholarships you're applying for. This is the part that financial aid will work with you on at a later date to see, okay, how are we going to fund your trip? Um, are you going to need to take out loans, for instance, this sort of thing? That's what the budget form is. So um, don't wait until the night before the deadline to do your application. As you can see, there are a lot of forms. Some of them are quite simple and quick, um, and some of them are gonna take you a little more time and involve a little more thought. Um, so unfortunately, let's see, my, I lost CIE page here at the top, um, but this is your best bet for sort of walking through the logistics of applying for a program. It's quite detailed. I tried to, to put everything that, that you might need there. Um, this video, the goal is just to familiarize you with the broad office and with the actual application forms that need to be completed before our deadline. So I hope it was helpful. Helpful, <laughs> excuse me.